This is the Google Pixel 8 disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. So to start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Now heat needs to be applied to the screen to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the screen off. Once the screen has been pried off, it can be lifted over from the right to the left, but be careful since the flex cable is still attached to the main board. At this point, the metal cover covering the connector for the screen cable needs to be removed. Now the screen cable can be disconnected from the main board. Looking at the back of the screen, we can see the plastic frame or border, which has some catches on it, which clip into place on the housing or frame of the phone, in addition to the adhesive behind the screen, to ensure a better seal. There's also copper tape behind the screen to help transfer heat, a cutout over here for the proximity sensor, the slot where the front facing camera sits into, as well as the fingerprint reader which is adhered to the back of the screen. Now the graphite film needs to be peeled off and the graphite film helps to transfer heat. At this point, there are 14 T4 or Torx 4 screws which need to be removed. Here's a look at the aluminum mid plate. There's a liquid damage indicator sticker which is that white sticker on the bottom. Looking at the other side, we can see a thermal pad over here which sits on top of the processor to help transfer heat. There's also a graphite pad over here, as well as the linear haptic feedback or vibrator motor on the bottom. The battery cable can now be disconnected from the main board. There's also a pull tab provided to help you pry the battery off. So as the instructions say on the pull tab, you're supposed to slide it up and pull it from the left to right, back and forth to help try prying off the adhesive. However, after attempting that, it wasn't really working for me and I accidentally pulled the tab out. So I'm just going to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 4575 milliamp hour battery.
Here's a better look at the 10.5 megapixel front facing camera. Here's a better look at the 50 megapixel primary and the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. The primary camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. This bracket is a placeholder for where the 5G millimeter wave antenna would go on the top. And just because this phone doesn't have a 5G millimeter wave antenna, it doesn't mean it doesn't support 5G. It just doesn't have the 5G millimeter wave technology which some networks use. Here's the bottom speaker assembly. And there's a mesh filter over the speaker opening. To remove the main board, there are two more T4 or Torx 4 screws which need to be removed. So taking a look at the main board, we can see the charger port is still soldered to the main board as always, which makes replacing the charger port more difficult. There's also a rubber gasket around the charger port itself. The primary microphone is located next to it. We can also see the SIM reader located here, as well as the proximity and ambient light sensor on top. We can also see copper tape over the front shield. Once that's peeled back, we can see a thermal pad on top of this chip. Once the thermal pad has been removed, we have a better look at the RAM, which is seated on top of the processor. Looking at the other side, we can see the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module, and some more graphite film on the shield. There's a single T4 or Torx 4 screw, holding down the top earpiece speaker assembly. Here's a better look at that. And there's a rubber gasket around the opening of the speaker. Moving on, there are two additional microphones on top, one by the rim of the frame, and one on the back camera bezel assembly. Both are connected to this flex cable, which also connects the LED flash and the back light sensor to the main board. The flex cable over here is for the NFC antenna and wireless charging coil, and there's some more graphite film to help transfer heat. And this flex cable over here is for the power button and volume keys on the side. To replace that, you'd have to gently peel off this flex cable, and then lift up on those metal tabs to pull them out of the frame. The glass camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying it off. So you won't need to take apart the phone to replace this glass cover. As for the panels on the back, those are glued to the frame with very strong adhesive, so prying those off will be very difficult if possible at all without damaging them. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 7 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, power on the phone, and you're done. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.